Welcome to another episode of Better Business, Better Life. Today I am here with the delightful Verity Craft, um, and Verity is one of our guest expert speakers. So she's here to speak to you about how you can use thought leadership in your business. So really keen to hear about that. Before we get started, first of all, welcome Verity. Thank you. We're Lovely excited to, to be see here. You. Yes, Lovely to see you. Too. Yeah. Um, so Verity and I have known each other for a number of years, and she has a lot of work. She does some work with my business. She works a lot with the EO um, members and all kinds of things around thought leadership. So yeah, but before we get started we like to let the listeners know a little bit about you personally and professionally so can you give us one of your personal bests and your professional best oh one of my personal bests um so I do a lot of performing outside of work I do a lot of musical theater which anyone who's connected with me on LinkedIn also probably knows because I talk about it a lot um so I think just in general uh, being on stage and um so I'll be on Wicked later this year and that's probably that's kind of what I see as my my personal best outside it's not necessarily one moment but just being so on like stage it. anytime and it's um, really funny because my husband who I met obviously a couple of years ago was actually in a couple of stage um, plays with you yeah so I knew him before I knew you so that's awesome <laughs> okay and professional best what we say professional best um is? professional best I think it's just just how we've managed to grow intelligent ink, but really um change it so where it started 10 years ago um which is when it started out and my business partner started it not me but yep. I, I've been around for eight years um is very different to where it is today and I actually see that as as a real success because it means that we've evolved with it and we've evolved it to suit um, us and our lives and where we want to have impact. And so that's been really exciting. And the fact that, you know, we're still here 10 years later is is pretty amazing. (laughs) So tell us a little bit about Intelligent Inc. What is it that you do? So we um, talk about transforming ideas into thought leadership. So it's all about taking business leaders who have a huge amount of experience and expertise and then helping them figure out how to leverage that and communicate that in a way that's really going to help them be seen as the authority in their field. And what that does is then it helps them essentially become the most obvious choice for people. It helps them bring business into their business and it helps them have a wider impact so that they're helping more people as opposed to just who they can on a one-on-one basis within their business. Awesome. That's fantastic. So what kind of businesses do you work with? Um, So mostly in the B2B space. um, We find thought leadership works really, really well for businesses who are talking to other businesses because other businesses want, business owners want to learn more and, um, and they're, or if they're in, if they're talking to big corporates, then, you know, corporates have huge amount of people who they need help with. So the B2B space works really, really well. But for us, it's much more about who the people are and, um, you know, whether they actually want to make something better. So what's the impact that they want to have? And that's where thought leadership sits is, yes, there's ROI for it and there's a financial aspect, but it's also got to be tempered with the, you're not just in it to make more money. You are also trying to have a bigger impact and because people can tell that and tell the difference. Okay. And I think the title that we chose today was having a better business, you Mm. know, how you can use thought leadership to actually do that. Mm. So share a couple of, um, I suppose, case studies or people that you've worked with and what you've done with them. Yeah. So um, one really good example is a company called Q4 Associates, who are an awesome um, consultancy who do basically help people create strategies and implement um, robotic process automation, which doesn't sound that exciting. (laughs) And when when they came to us and were like, we think we want to write a book about robotic process automation, we sort of went, I'm not sure that we do, but... (laughs) Okay. Um, But when we talked to them, you know, what we discovered really quickly was that it's about so much more than that. It's about change management. It's about really creating um, digital colleagues so that your human workforce and your digital workforce are working in tandem. So it's not about replacing your human workforce. It's about augmenting them and making them better. And so, and that was really exciting. So what we've done with them is worked with them both um, developing a book, which so um, Morris, Juby and um, John, and now I'm going to get in trouble because I've forgotten his last name. Um, <laughs> John, we love you. Sorry. Um, <laughs> um, I've just written a book that just came out um, just prior to Christmas, um, which is all about how to how to do that, how to um, implement a digital workforce. Mm-hmm. Um, but at the same time, we've also been helping them evolve their um, thinking and their ideas and then putting out content regularly around that. So what I think has been really interesting for them is that where they started a year-ish ago or whenever it was that we started on the, the book project was um, is quite different to where they ended up and that thinking's evolved and they've been able to develop frameworks that then they've been able to take out to clients and use. So for them, it's both enabled them to be seen as the authority and, and really continue to build that reputation that they've got out in the field, but also at the same time evolve their thinking so that their business is actually better as well. 
Okay, awesome. And so what's your most favourite project you've worked on so far? Oh, most favourite? Yes. I'm, oh, I'm not sure. Um, I'm not I'm, sure you love them all, of course. I, I'm very bad at picking favourites in yeah. general. Like, <laughs> anytime someone asks me like a favourite book or something, I have to give them like 20. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> favourite project? Um I think some of the clients that it's not like a project, but the clients that we work with on an ongoing basis are definitely my favorite. And the reason for that is that, you know, when you do a project, yes, you can have an impact, but it's nothing compared to when you're continuously contributing to the world. And so, you know, with some of our clients who we've been working with for five, six, seven, eight years, you know, what they've been able to achieve is really amazing and being part of that is really amazing and um you know you become part of their team and so I think that's the it wouldn't be just one kind of work but those relationships that you build over time and where you get to know their team as well and you really get to know their thinking and you're able to push them in new directions that's really exciting for us and so those those are probably my favorites I told you I'm terrible at picking no, favorites but <laughs> I, I agree with you as a coach it's like when you actually become part of that family and you yeah. get to share in the successes and you get to see as you know things grow it's just it makes your heart sing right yeah totally yeah, cool yeah. okay so tell us the, the 101 of thought leadership what does it really mean and can it apply because I get the whole b2b thing mm-hmm. but can it also apply because consultants coaches that sort of stuff you can go yeah that makes sense what well, can yeah. it also apply to products yeah so it can um so thought leadership when it comes down to it is exactly what it sounds like it's leading with your thinking yeah. essentially so it's being having some thinking or some ideas or some um, whatever the thinking is that could be research and development for products for example yeah. it could be the thinking that you're doing around developing frameworks if you're a consultant or coach it could be um, just the the thinking that you're doing around your industry whatever that is you know if yeah. you're doing things a bit differently one of our clients um, has a fit out company and so we're at the moment working with them on um, looking at how we may, you know, how they make the fit out industry more sustainable. And, you know, while they're not going out there saying, Hey, we're not, you know, we're not perfect. Yeah. They are, they're out there saying, okay, well, we all need to do better. So what are some of the ways that we can do that? And, and trying to lead that conversation. Mm-hmm. So you can absolutely do it in whatever field you're in. It's yep. about being willing to kind of stand up, take that leadership position and go, okay, how can we do this better? Yeah. And being really open with other people about that so that it's not just about improving your own business, but actually going, all right, how can we have that wider impact and be really positive? So for businesses that are, say, um, you know, a product um, business, for example, they might sell a specific product. But if they're doing all of the stuff in the background to try and figure out, well, how can we better solve our customers' yeah. problems? How can we make this product even better for their lives? That sort of stuff is still leading the way. It's still thinking. And so if you're then willing to share that, yeah. that's where you can still really tap into thought leadership. I was just thinking, actually, we had Richard McDonald on here the other day and he actually does water. Um, yeah. But his whole, he's changed the way that water is actually delivered to places in New Zealand cool. by, you know, you reusing bottles, yeah. um, just in time delivery so I, mean, I suppose in some ways that is changing the way the industry will work yeah. going forward yeah yeah absolutely and I think it's the you know it, we'll often talk about the fact that you have to remember the two parts of thought leadership so it's it's the thought and the leadership so the yeah. thought is the what thinking are you doing what are the ideas that you're coming up with what innovation are you coming up with to make things better and then the leadership is really being willing to step out there and and you know actually go all right well we're willing to push this conversation forward um and the two of them in combo is is what makes it so effective because if you've just got the thinking you might improve your own business but you might not have that wider effect that you'd really like to have yeah. and if you're just out there talking the whole time mm-hmm. you might look really great <laughs> but like are you really having that much of an impact so having that combo of the two is really important and so what are the, the common mistakes that people make because I kind of heard a little bit of a oh well, this is where you go wrong with this so what are yeah. the common mistakes you see um part of it is not digging deep enough. So a lot of people will just, they see thought leadership as the same as content marketing and content marketing is an amazing tool. And most thought leaders should be using it as one of their tools, but it's a, it's a tool. It's a way of doing something. So if you're just putting stuff out for the sake of it, for the sake of putting out content, it's going to be really hard to then be seen as the authority and you're going to constantly having to be put out put out more and put more promotion behind it because actually you're just saying the same thing as everybody else. Sure. So it is always about taking it a step further. You know, how can you say something different? How can you get people thinking in a different way or behaving in a different way? Yeah. Um, 
So that would be one. The other one that I would say is um, just in terms of like building an audience and thing is is forgetting the human at the other end of it. <laughs> um, <laughs> and it's the constant promo, you know. Yeah. So it's, it's remembering like why does someone want to give you their attention? You know, there's a lot of noise out there. Yeah. So really thinking about what's the value for the person that I'm out there talking to, whether that's via LinkedIn, whether that's in a conversation, whether that's speaking on a stage, you know, as opposed to it just being, here's how awesome I am. It's like, what's the value actually going to be for the person that, um, that you're talking to. Yeah. And then the third one that I'd say is forgetting to bring it back into your business. So this is where I think there's kind of the two extremes as you get the people that we've already talked about who are like, push, 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 promo, promo, promo. Yeah that really struggle to become seen as thought leaders because they're not giving the value. And then there's the people who give, give, give so much and forget that they still need to make (laughs) some money and, and have a business. Um, So making sure that they still have a way of getting into your sort of business ecosystem is really important. Um, And it's something that we've done poorly in the past, honestly. Um, (laughs) So yeah, 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 yeah. we've all done it. (laughs) Um, So it's making sure that, you know, it's making it really easy for them to get on to your database because you're giving them something of value and yeah. an exchange or it's making it really easy like for example we work with a lot of authors and help them write their books yeah. and remembering to put something in the book that says hey head to our website and download these so that then you can then keep communicating with them it's not necessarily about making the hard sell straight away but it is about making sure okay well how do I keep them to be part of my community and yeah. make them a community as opposed to just someone who reads one post that you do or watches one video or something. Okay, cool. Yeah, I was just thinking, I don't know, um, there's there's influencers out there, but this is very, very different to influencing, isn't it? Yeah. What do you mean? Because, I mean, I think that especially perhaps for business owners who are, who've not kind of looked at this as a possibility, they might look at influencers and go, oh, my God, I don't want to be like that person who's out there. Well, look at me, look at me, look at me. So how would they take the first steps to, to um, think about whether or not thought leadership is right for them? Yeah, um, fair. I wouldn't really want to be an influencer <laughs> either, um, honestly. <laughs> Um, I, the first thing is to remember that thought leadership is about your ideas, not about you. So you use your personal profile without a doubt. Like I, I use my LinkedIn and my network and all of that to share our thoughts and ideas about thought leadership, but it's about the ideas and what we want to get out there. And that's the difference is you're not building yourself up for the sake of building yourself up. And I think that that actually does help a lot of particularly Kiwis who have the whole tall poppy syndrome, like don't want to put themselves out there. It does help when they remember actually it's about the impact that you can have with your ideas as opposed to just making yourself look and feel really good. Um, And yeah, I guess that's where it comes back to also making sure that you've got the thinking as well as the leadership because you could just be out there talking and you might be an influencer and you might build an audience, but you know, if you're not backing it up with the experience and with the, the, what you're living in real life, then meh. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> whatever um, <laughs> yeah. and so there's obviously there's a lot of thinking that needs to go in behind it a little structure that goes in behind it what are the first steps they would take if they were to say okay I think this sounds like something I really am um, passionate about I really do want to make a difference I want to sort of you know lead my industry forward yeah what would be the sort of the, the steps they would take to start on that journey yeah so first thing is to figure out like what you're going to be a thought leader and what you want to, maybe if you don't want to be a thought leader or be known as that, because it's a bit of a term, you don't necessarily want to class yourself as a thought leader. But if you want to build thought leadership or share thought leadership with people, what are you going to do that in? So what's the thing that you can be really specifically the authority in? And that's not necessarily going to be the exact same as all of the services that your business provides, because a business can, you know, do 10 different things, but actually it's what's the red thread that ties them together? You know, what's that thing that you do really specifically well? So like we've got a client who um, works with marketing teams and corporates and she's identified that, yes, you know, she can help with the strategy and she can help with the coaching the team and she can help with problem solving sprints, but what pulls it together and what makes her, where she specifically sits and can be an expert in is how do you unlock the potential in your existing marketing team? So how do you open up what or already exists in that. And so that's what she's focusing all of her thought leadership around is like both in terms of what she shares, but also the thinking that she's doing is like what other tools and frameworks and models could be really useful for that. 
So that's the first step is figuring out like, what can you be the thought leader in? And um, I've got a resource that I'm happy to share with anyone who's keen. If you comment or um, below, then I can below I assume it's below somewhere and on podcast put a link on the right podcast perfect <laughs> so happy to share that that's like yeah. has some questions to just start you thinking in that way okay. and then it's about starting to share and you know we always recommend putting a strategy in place but actually sometimes you're better to get started and then start to build out a strategy because otherwise you can stay locked for so long and trying to get it perfect that you never end up doing anything. So I always recommend starting to put things out on one or two platforms. Like LinkedIn is one that I really love using because I like being able to connect with people and have a network. And when I've got a new idea, I'll just make it a post and it doesn't have to be perfect because it's not anything that I've put more than, you know, a few minutes into, but start trying out your ideas and seeing what people connect with. And then that way you'll get a feel for what you actually should be talking about and where you can really add value to people's lives. Um, so it's kind of like building an MVP. Yeah. You're going to go out there and say, hey, look, it's not going to be perfect because a lot of people do get caught up in that whole, yeah. oh, my gosh, I've got to get this absolutely right yeah. because I put it out there it's not right. People rip me to shreds. Totally. So it's more like building a little minimum viable product. You go, hey, look, I've put it out there, give a bit of a go, see what resonates, yeah. what doesn't, and then build it from there. But don't just keep going ad hoc yeah yes yeah exactly it's like an mvi a minimal viable idea yes, like it's yeah. get something out there see what connects and then you can build a strategy around that right um and when it comes to the strategy it's it's about making sure that you know who your audience are and and i always recommend going really narrow so um it's often called narrow casting is is okay. be really clear on who you exist for yep. um and talk to those people then it's going, all right, well, where are those people? What are the platforms that I need to be on? What kind of ways can I share content? And that doesn't just mean social media. It can also be webinars. It can be a podcast like a this. Book. It can be a book. Yeah. Exactly. There's heaps of ways. And then the other thing is, and how are you going to bring them back into the business? Yes. So thinking about that ecosystem. Yeah. So it's the who you're talking to, what your message is, what that positioning is, um, where you're going to be and then how you're bringing them back into the business. And if you've got those four things sorted, then you'll have a pretty solid strategy. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. So we always like to make sure that the listeners can walk over three th simple things that they mm -hmm. can do when they leave this, this um, not in my room because we're in the room, they're not, <laughs> but when they leave the podcast. Yeah. So what would you say the three things, if somebody's thinking about this, will be the three things they could actually go off and do right now that yep. could make a difference to their business? Yep. So I'd say, first of all, start testing your ideas. So pick a platform. Um, LinkedIn works really well. I always recommend that. But, you know, if your audience aren't there, then don't you pick a different platform. Yep. But just start trying things out. Just put things out and see what people connect with. Yep. Um, the second one I would say is start jotting down all of those things that you talk about with clients or with customers in conversation. You know, all those little gems that are the things they're like, oh, I hadn't thought about that. Or, oh, wow, that's really interesting. Or yeah. start collating all of those because you'll start to see some real trends around what the things are that actually people get real value out of. Um, it's really interesting. I actually had a client who has started recording some of their sessions with their clients. Great. Um, and, it, you know, you've got to ask permission first, of yeah, course. Yeah. But if you do that and you like start listening back, you can actually get those little aha moments. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah, that's right. I said something that was really valuable there. So Yeah, yeah for sure. Idea. Yeah. And then the third thing would be to not try and do it all yourself and that's not necessarily just a plug for us but I, like incorporate your team yep. you know get people involved it doesn't have to just be the say the yeah. sole business owner or the ceo it can be something that everyone gets involved in mm -hmm. um and so and you'll start to be able to pull on the expertise of everyone from the team and so that's really powerful so i think just remember that it's not just you being out there as like well, who me i'm like a thought leader <laughs> you know it, yeah. it's it's about the ideas and what are the best ways to get those out there and often that can be through bringing the whole team together and and all being part of that journey. Yeah, I worked with an IT team that actually um, wanted to be positioned as the leaders in a particular type of IT technology. Yeah. And they actually en engaged with their development team and said, you know, you come yeah. up with ideas. And every week they would share content from a different member of the team. Right. Which was, was wonderful because, yes, yeah. definitely the CEO was the driver behind it. Yeah. But the whole team was in behind and wanted to be pushing yeah. those boundaries, which is great. Yeah, yeah, awesome. Okay, so if somebody wants to get in contact with you, um, yeah. we'll have a chat to you. So first of all, we're going to give them that, that download so they can yeah. actually start thinking about what we're going to do. If they want to get in contact, 
contact with you? How would they do that? Yeah, so a um, couple of ways. Our website is intelligentinc.co.nz and that's yes. Inc with a K. Um, <laughs> and otherwise, connect with me on LinkedIn, Verity yep. Craft. Um, I always like meeting new people. Maybe just put in the message that, that this is where you um, heard me from because yes. it's always a bit weird when you get one without a message. <laughs> um, and otherwise, yeah, check out our website and, and see there's a bunch of free downloads on there and, and yep. blogs and things that you can um, engage with already and get some ideas as well. Perfect. Thank you very much. And I have to say, I've been following Verity for a long, long time, and she has some quite unique things on there. I've seen her <laughs> sing on LinkedIn, I've seen all <laughs> kinds of stuff. So I highly recommend her doing, uh, following her on LinkedIn. And yeah, thank you very much for sharing those tips and pointers. Really appreciate it. Thanks. Look forward to seeing you again soon. Awesome. Thanks so much for having me. Thank you very much.